Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> okay. I guess we should give people a few more minutes to arrive. Okay. I'm looking forward to this talk. I started looking at some of Saint Professor Santilli's work uh, a number of years ago. It'd be interesting to get back to it now. That's that's very, that's very nice of you. <clears throat> The only comment I have is, is Professor Luzievich comment, something to be interesting has to be controversial. So, <laughs> so but because being controversial means there is something new, so there is some possibility of additional insights. But uh, I was my interested to I was interested to notice, Dr. Santelli, that you you shared very early on, you shared some interest with uh, Oshevich. Uh, on the subject of the inverse problem. Oh yes, indeed. I did he has, has a paper. <clears throat> has, Osevich has a paper on the on the inverse problem. I think in about 1975 or, or something of that sort. Um, of course, his his approach was was quite different than yours. But uh, yes, but I think about, his, his motiv it. motivation was very similar. Right? Yes. Is that the inverse function problem? What problem is the inverse function? Well, the problem was the following <clears throat> is the, to achieve, you know, identify the integrability condition, or if you want necessary and sufficient condition for, uh, for a given equation of motion, both in Newtonian mechanics as well as in field theory, to, um, to admit uh, a representation by a variational principle. Uh, which is essentially a representation by a via a Lagrangian, by a Lagrangian, um, which means that uh, the, the equations, the analytic equation, <clears throat> are not the original one or the truncated one. They are both without external term. And I, I, at MIT, I spent uh, years to work out uh, the condition in field theory. And then at Harvard, I um, worked, wrote two, two, two monographs with Spring of a Lag. The first is one dedicated to the inverse problem in Newtonian mechanics. And what is the maximum we can represent out of Newton's equation? In, uh, in <clears throat> and those are the um, conditions of variational self adjoinness. That's volume one, essentially. Identify the limit of the representation of capability with a conventional variational principle. Volume two instead is, um, was dedicated to achieve universality in the representation of all. All, um, yeah, all possible forces represented by Newton, and not necessarily those variational self-adjoint, those derived from a potential. And was the, the dream was to do it both classically and at the operator level. It's a big dream, but um, classically was, uh, was by the proposal of the Birkhoffian um, completion of, of um, Hamiltonian mechanics, which did, uh, did achieve universality of all Newton's equation. And at the operator level via the Lee admissible completion of Heisenberg um, equations, it also achieved, uh, we proved later on, achieved um, the representation of all Newton forces, which means representation of all uh, external terms in Lagrange and Hamilton's equations. Those are this, uh, essentially the, the inverse. This, this, uh, this question of the in existence <coughs> of the you know, solution of the inverse problem, of course, is, is in independent of that in a sense right it's it's the uh, it's the uh, issue of the relationship between the hamiltonian and the lagrangian approaches in general right? and yes uh, right so yeah. we have the legendre transformations and so in the sense there's this inverse problem the, the... That is correct. It is one of the formulation of the inverse problem. That's why it's a very interesting, <clears throat> very interesting field because it's, um, you really work at the edge of representation of capability of uh, original conception by Newton. That's Newton. The number of forces uh, included in the Newton formulation are, are, are quite uh, quite large. We in the twentieth century physics, we've only represented. 
the components of Newton's equations that are derived from a potential. That's nowadays elementary. Okay, uh, so that's a little little discussion before the, the meeting, but I think we should probably uh, start now. It's about five minutes after. So, Thank you. Uh, good morning, Jesus, and good morning, Larissa. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so just before we get started with uh, the uh, main presentation today, I just wanted to uh, uh, briefly, uh, uh, well, let, let me just share this screen, the, the usual agenda sort of thing that I was doing the last few times. Um, uh, so uh, I guess the, the first item on my agenda was just that, uh, I would like to advertise the fact that we're open to new presentations. Um, and uh, we have presentations now um, the next week from uh, Dr. Kutzan from Poland. And uh, and then uh, on October 20th, I'm uh, offering to present uh, some of the work I did on uh, uh, relative acceleration. And these two talks are actually rather closely related, although very different in the approach. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> but after that, uh, the the schedule is open. And uh, so I would be very interested, of course, to hear from, from anyone else who wants to make a presentation. Um, I have a couple of people on our list who are not here today that I, I will specifically ask, <laughs> um, but, uh, in any case, I just want to advertise that. Um, what else did I want to say? Uh, basically, uh, we have recordings of the previous meetings and I, I'm keeping a list of that. So whenever you feel like uh, perusing them or, or reviewing something that uh, is in a previous meeting, then please feel free to do so. And uh, that's about it. So I would uh in introduction to dr Santilli, i guess that, that's a very difficult thing to to do since he has a very long and uh, illustrious career um thank you and uh i could just mention that i find that uh my own understanding of dr Santilli's ideas are, are somewhat limited by my uh uh, understanding of the underlying fundamental mathematical approach. Um, but at the same time, I, I find many of the motivations and the, uh, the um, conceptual ideas in Dr. Santilli's work uh, very attractive and, and, and quite convincing on a number of levels. Um, and I also would say that I actually found in some ways uh, a synthesis of uh, Dr. Santilli's ideas and uh, Bolshevich's ideas on relativity that actually uh, might might be worthwhile talking about at some point in the future. Uh, but in any case, I'm looking forward to being able to get a better grounding um, in the mathematics required and uh, how uh, like basically just to how, how to proceed you know, from the ground up in, in, a, in a sort of most elementary and rudimentary way uh, to, to topics <clears throat> that are, of course, much more interesting from the, from the point of view of physics. But we have to begin somewhere. So uh, I would like uh, Dr. Santilli to, to please uh, present his talk. And I uh, hope that we have enough discussion time uh, remaining for some significant discussion after the talk. Dr. Santilli. <clears throat> Thank you. Then, um, do I, I need a little help to share the, um, do I have the... Oh, yes. Let me, first of all, remove my share. Okay. Thank you. And um, can I, can I, do I have to put myself full screen or uh, um, uh, maybe the... That's sort of up to you. Just going about to share, uh, sharing the share screen. Share screen. Do you want to? Okay. Share screen. Yes, okay. We did it the other time. 
No, no, this is not. Uh, here, I see the chair here. And the, no, no, not, not. It is the view without uh, without the attachment. <clears throat> That's okay. I'll, I'll talk to you and then later I will share the <clears throat> when I start to have the, the, the oh, transparency. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> sorry for my my, my trot. I um, wanted to thank Dr. Page and of course uh, all the all participants and really truly uh, grateful for the, this opportunity. And, and um, but I have to apologize to all of you because you are very advanced mathematicians. And I try to make my, uh, I had problems in preparing this lecture, I have to, uh, to confess, because the material is just a number of, of the topic. Uh, a general overview is significant. I tried at the beginning to start with a couple of the theorems and lemma, but then I recognized that with the, just with a couple of, then the rest of the lecture will, will be gone. So, so conclusion, I am elected to, to, to make a conceptual presentation and not a technical one. So I, I beg you for your leniency. I'm sure <clears throat> the te technical presentations are available by a number of qualified mathematicians beside myself. And you can formulate it in any case. Also, I have to apologize with many colleagues because the number of the literature in the field, as you will see, is just too, too large. The number of authors that have made fundamental contribution in ISO mathematics is truly is truly large, and so therefore I, I cannot make a selection. But I will, of course, I will indicate um, at the end my um, my presentation. I will share my screen, hoping that everything is is fine. Now the um, the uh, here is supposed to be the my um, uh, I think uh, is the best the beginning. I'm not sure, Carl. This uh, could be it could be this one it's or different. I don't know. It's different from the other one. No, because it's the main page. Uh -huh. It's the main page, and uh, yes, it is. Okay, yes, it is. This is the one. Okay. Share. Now share. Now I have to go to. I have to go to. I have to go to. Just a moment, please. I have to go to. And then and then start. Okay. Can everybody <clears throat> can everybody see the in full uh, the, my yes. uh, my slide full uh, full screen? Yes, okay. it is. Okay, so so I can proceed. Okay, so this <clears throat> yes, very well. So um, just one second. So let me. So uh, let's see what uh, my idea, my dream is in this lecture. Um, is to um, perhaps achieve some insight in Professor Cruz's very interesting axiomatization of the notion of, of interaction. And if there is any glimpse of going deeper, that will make me, will make me happy. But let's see what, um, independently from Professor Cruz's presentation, let's see what ISO, ISO mathematics is, is all about, uh, the, essentially the, the general, uh, general construction. The, the, uh, no, I'm sorry. This was not the beginning of the. Um, I apologize. This is the real beginning. I'm sorry. I apologize. This is an informal presentation. Okay, so let's go to the isomathematics. So, so isomathematics was conceived and mostly developed in its foundation at the department of um, when I was at the department of mathematics of Harvard University from late '77 until um, the mid uh, 1980s. As you know, the mathematics department at Harvard is located at the Science Center, third floor. My office was up there. The, 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 the reason for the developing isomathematics were several. The first reason is, of course, <clears throat> what I consider personally what has been the study of all my life since my graduate studies at the University of Torino in the mid 60s, namely <clears throat> Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, argument that quantum mechanics is not a complete theory. Einstein's view, those are his words, is that uh, quantum mechanics is strictly local, namely the wave function is can only be defined at one point in, in space, isolated in space. The potential can only be defined one point in space. And of course, the, the Newton Leibniz calculus is only, uh, com, uh, in a way, fully compatible, solely defined at one point. Since the quantum mechanics is so strictly local, quantum mechanics cannot, that's his, that's his view, uh, the, the quantum mechanics cannot represent the entanglement of a pair of particles that were originally coupled 
and then separated and the entanglement remains at whatever distance, mutual distance, including astronomical distance. So Einstein concluded that in view of this local structure of quantum mechanics, the, um, the, the only possibility to represent um, the, 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 the evidence of the entanglement was already available in the 30s, strong evidence. Now there is an enormous uh, evidence, even at the classical level of entanglement at the classical level nowadays. But um, at, at Einstein times, uh, the only way to represent this evi the experimental evidence of the entanglement is by, by, um, by hypothesizing, um, making the hypothesis that there are um, uh, some um, hyperluminal uh, communication between the particles, which will violate. Uh, special relativity. That assumption of superluminal uh, uh, impulses for communication and interaction was unacceptable at that time. It is unacceptable in my view today. Uh, I am in full agreement with Einstein from A to Z. So in view of this situation, um, Einstein concluded that quantum mechanics, the only way out of this is that quantum mechanics is incomplete. There is something missing that allows the uh, quantitative representation of this very mysterious phenomenon of nature without superluminal communication. So he contacted his students, Boris Podolsky and Nathan Rosen, and together wrote this magnificent paper, which is one of the most important, in my view, following, of course, the original contribution by Einstein. So, so one of the objectives of isomechanics was developed to, to see, to reach this, this um, um, to, to try a, man, a, a, a quantitative representation of this entanglement without superluminal, superluminal impulses. But this was only one of many other. I was supported by the Department of Energy and my task, uh, I was asked to, to to see whether there was any new possibility of, um, of formulating something out of the box for a uh, nuclear fusion. The Department of Energy already at that time was out of billions of dollars in trying to reach a uh, control of nuclear fusion with no results whatsoever. Nothing has changed as, as far as I can see now, despite all possible efforts. So, um, so, so the, the angle from, uh, from this viewpoint was my personal view of the following, that quantum mechanics is a majestic theory for the representation of, um, of, uh, of atomic structure because locality there is fully acceptable, this principle of strict locality. However, when we pass at the nuclear structure, this implies that the nucleus is an ideal sphere with points in it. With a clear understanding that the approximate character of quantum mechanics in nuclear physics is out of the square, out of question. In any case, nuclear power plants designed based on quantum mechanics, thanks God, they do work. So the approximate character is out of question, but it's not, um, that's not, that we cannot end, um, uh, in my opinion, a, a theory can be claimed to be exactly valid. It represents all experimental data uh, of, um, of the field considered from a, a first axiomatic principle without adulteration, manipulated form factor and so on. And, um, and indeed, the reality of the nucleus is that the nuclei are composed by extended charge distribution of proton and neutron in partial. This is a fundamental, the first fundamental concept of this lecture, in partial mutual penetration, because according to clear experimental evidence, the nuclear volumes are smaller than the sum of, a, of a volume of proton and neutron. So they are in contact, mutual contact. Ladies and gentlemen, until you consider point particle, you remain only at the level of, um, of, of uh, potential interaction. The moment you add dimension, <clears throat> then the notion of interaction changes dramatically in my view. And uh, in this case, the part particle must sense also that the must, um, you must take into contribution, um, you must take into account the contribution also of the particles nearby. This is not my idea. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is what, um, what I consider to be the, the first and most interesting completion of quantum me mechanics in, uh, in the 40s by the Prince Louis de Broglie and the physicist, um, physicist uh, uh, David Bohm, according to which there the, the, the was a the non-local, is the first non-local com completion of quantum mechanics that I know, according to which the char characterization, let's say, of this proton uh, depends on, on the influence of all the others. This was a strictly non-local uh, conception. Unfortunately, it, um, it, 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 <laughs> it suffers enormous uh, opposition by, by the contemporary. 
um, not only himself, uh, but the, the princess was under pressure to convince the husband not to pursue this, uh, this theory to such an extent that Prince Neboli never published anything on this theory. The theory was published and carries his name, as you can see in the various encycl encyclopedia, it was worked out by David Bohm. But the, the beauty of the idea, however, persists. The, the, but um, what essentially forced me into the into the into the eyes of mathematics is that um, is that after a century, the, and let's be honest, billions of dollars of, of um, public funds, quantum mechanics have been unable to represent in an exact way the nuclear magnetic moment, even for the deuteron, we miss one one or two percent, or spin, even the, the spin of the deuteron is one. According to quantum mechanics, proton and neutron spin one up, so it can only couple in a singlet with spin zero. So therefore, for the intent, intent of maintaining quantum mechanics, then um, they assume that, um, that, um, that the deuteron is in a, um, there are a non-null orbital state in a combination so that, uh, so that the total uh, value of them is one. But ladies and gentlemen, with all the respect, uh, uh, the, the, with colleagues, uh, this is one century of, uh, of controversy. We got to try, at least try, to reach a representation of the spin one of the deuteron in the ground state, because when the deuteron that are isolated are in the ground state and they are not in excited orbital states. We did finally achieve after 40, 50 years of working at this problem, we did achieve at least an initial representation and maybe we'll fairly interested one day Later on, in November, December, we can we can uh, discuss it. So, so a conclusion: this is uh, this is essential. The objective, the objective of isomatting is to achieve a representation of the dimension. It's not enough the shape, and it's not enough and the density. This is a totally new idea. The notion didn't exist in the entire day of the 20th century physics. Whenever you have point particles such as the electron. The density is, is normalized to, to the value one. Uh, the, the, however, if you have extended particles, then um, the, 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 the inclusion of the density is mandatory, uh, especially from any corner, including when you use the isosymmetry and the um, isosymmetry, even if you don't include the density, the isosymmetry transformation will bring it back into them. But um, uh, this, uh, the, the, this, uh, the, this is the representation that is subject to a number of conditions. You may help me to, to add a number of them. The first of all, first of all, that if we have a representation, even if exact at a given time, it's not enough in my view. For reason we will, axiomatic reason we will discuss, we have to discuss, those are, those are the crucial aspects that they were, um, unfortunately forced me to abandon a formal presentation with theorems and so on. Namely, the representation has to be invariant over time. We will see theory that um, quantum mechanics has this magnificent property of preserving numerical prediction on the, um, the same conditions at different times. Other theories do not, we have to understand why. And why hadronic mechanics confirms or verifies this, this property. But then, um, but then there are additional there are additional conditions. For instance, the, the um, just a second. Yes, the uh, sorry, I had to make one one small comment. Then there is a personal a personal condition that uh, I have imposed throughout uh, my work. I have written many times in my, in my studies that quantum mechanics has a majestic axiomatic structure for reasons that you will see alive very soon. So therefore, I wanted to achieve this representation of dimension, um, uh, shape, and density by maintaining, the, uh, careful, the abstract axiom of quantum mechanics. And so what is in this way, what I remain with, I remain with only not carefully, I try the impossible to try to avoid any basic axioms, but essentially instead, instead try to locate a new realization of existing axiom. So, so you can see there was, so the question, what's the difference what we are doing with um, Copenhagen school? At the abstract level, everything I have to say coincide with the mathematics of the, of the Copenhagen school identically. We can use the same symbol. You will see often using the same symbol, mathematical symbols. However, there is a difference in the realization. The Copenhagen school realizes quantum axiom in the simplest possible way, which is magnificent for the atomic structure and many other fields, particularly in accelerated and beautiful, works beautiful, but it's not insufficient, incomplete. 
And so we, we essentially work broader, we seek broader realization of the, the our realization broader than the Copenhagen school. And then there are other, uh, um, other conditions you may help me to add, but those two conditions are fundamental in my view, that at least has been guiding principle in the construction. Please interrupt me at any time. This is an informal, um, an informal, an informal meeting, so I beg you, no, there's no need to be formal. Let's look at, um, so let's look at the axiom of quantum mechanics that are so dear to me. Very, very quickly, you know them all. The first is the enveloping, uh, universal enveloping associative algebra, but which is realized with associative product. What associative product? Ladies and gentlemen, is the associative product I learned in high school is the most elementary possible um, um, possible as realization of the, of the notion of, of an associative product that, uh, that is conceivably possible. So that's the Copenhagen realization. But once you base, then you have the, then you have, of course, the Poincare Birkhoff Wood theorem, in infinite basis, and then you have the algebra. And you know all this is, um, is the anti symmetric component of the envelope. And then, uh, of course, after that uh, came in historical, came uh, Heisenberg with this equation based on the Lie product. Um, this is the infinitesimal version. This is a finite integrated version. But most importantly, the last one is the quantum mechanics, which will have a dominant, dominant um, aspect in, in what you will hear later on, namely the class of equivalence of quantum mechanics is given by unitary transformation. I want to go deeper into this and what are the implications. So those are the axioms that um, I did spend decades of my life to maintain, not to violate, at the level of isomathematics, not so at the level of the admissible, the admissible mathematics. If I have a few moments at the end, I would like to touch them so you can see the difference. Very well, so what is the proposal? My proposal, this was April, April um, released on April um, uh, 1978. I, I indicated the conventional, simplest possible associative product of quantum mechanics and of applied mathematics has to be lifted. We use the word lifted because I don't know if mathematically is correct to see a map or a morphism. I, I do not know. So we use the word lifting. It's lifted into this form in which there is an, an, an operator, a new operator, Hattie, sandwiched in between the elements that you multiply. And this uh, uh, new operator called isotopic element is subjected only one restriction, that to be positive definite, but otherwise possess a totally unrestricted functional dependence on anything you can think of. Not only is there a on. typo? Typo there? Uh, please, should please. Should be X, X, T hat, Y? Uh, let me see. Uh, it will be a time. The equality. Uh, oh, yes. I'm sorry. The, the, the hat is missing. I apologize. My, my uh, eyes are tired for writing. Well, you, you wrote A T hat Y, right? But I, I thought you, you meant to write X T hat Y. You are also very correct. Thank you, Jansen. Okay. I, am, I am embarrassed to this, but I didn't have time to do the final check of the old equation. Thank you for the correction. Uh, I appreciate it indeed. It has to be X, T, Y, Y. And T has to be T hat. T hat. This is my fault. I didn't have time to, uh, with too many things involved. Uh, this is supposed to be T hat has to be positive, positive, definite with an arbitrary function, functional dependent. Notice the dependence uh, here, back to the Prince de Broly and David Bohm. You see the dependence on the local density, of course, the local temperature, the pressure. Think about a proton in the core of a star. If, if the proton is a point, then, uh, then, then, <laughs> then uh, you, you're not, you have basically you have an elementary situation, but the proton is extended. We will feel the pressure and the temperature and, and so on. This was published in page 71 of, of the second volume of Elements of Adroni Mechanics and, uh, on, uh, and was also published in, in the definition 372 of this memoir, also published in April 1977, memoir I wrote also at Harvard. I wrote with, um, with uh, affiliation of the Lyman Laboratory because that was my contribution to DOE, but I was in reality, I was at the Department of Mathematics as, Indicated with other works, very well. So this, let me flash you. Was that explicit, explicitly not time dependent? 
it is um, yeah. it, it is thank you our <laughs> kinetic patient thank you the, the um, see we are talking about a, a, a particular class of system that are called uh, one way are called the, the closed non hamiltonian system those are systems that are isolated from the rest of the universe are stable and therefore verify total conservation law total conservation of the energy and so on However, those, those system, uh, we suspect that those system admit internal non-Hamiltonian interactions. And in, under those assumptions, then uh, those assumptions are best represented by assuming that uh, the isotopic element does not depend explicitly on time. Because uh, in that case, uh, the, you do a time reversal invariance and then you will, uh, you will violate uh, causality while by having a time independence then um, then then all the, the time reversal image of the models that we will present verify causality to the best of our knowledge thank you <laughs> thank you for the, the question very very deep very well this is the this is the definition of three, 372 at that time there were no text so we will type the papers and this is 200 page paper with many of these things. Unfortunately, I cannot um, see this is a, a definition I would love to explain with you mathematically. It's now 40 plus years old. Let me just give you the gift. The gift is a, um, this is a, this is talking about the universal enveloping algebra and uh, subjected to a, a lifting in our language completion, if you want. The original algebra has a traditional associative product, but then the product is subjected to this lifting. And this, um, the, the, the gist is essentially that this uh, the diagram is invertible if and only if this lifted product is one of the various forms possible for, uh, to, uh, for associative algebra. If it is non associative, no, then there are uh, fundamental uh, problem, problem that you, we will see very soon. Those are the, this, the, this uh, little list uh, may be of some interest to Professor Cruz because these are all realization of the associative product. Uh, that I know, I have to clarify. Those are uh, I'm talking about an associative algebra um, uh, over a, a conventional numeric field. That is a numeric field with characteristic at zero. Because if we introduce characteristic of a field, then we have incredible degree of freedom, which is a non physical application in any case. So the first, yeah, write correctly, <laughs> in the, um, write correctly the way of isoproduct is called isoproduct should be written when t is scalar then t can be an operator and then finally when t is nil potent when t is nil potent everything works out everything i have to say it can to my knowledge um, professor cruz i'm not sure uh, but um, this may be another realization then there are other forms such as for instance when um, the isotopic element is multiplied to the left or multiplied to the right um, they are conceivable however uh, they, the product does not characterize, to my knowledge, again, remember I'm a physicist and not a mathematician. To my knowledge, the, I'm told by mathematicians that this do not classify in algebra as understood in mathematics because they violated the left or right distributive or, or um, scalar uh, rules to characterize an algebra. But I'm very curious to know the axiomatization of Professor Cruz. Um, notion of, uh, of uh, interaction with this uh, this important realization because the, the, it has intriguing physical possibilities and uh, there may be other incidentally but uh, those, that's all I know it is listed in, um, in uh, my first volume of uh, elements of hadronic mechanics which is the, um, the most comprehensive presentation of uh, isomathematics to this day that I know has been many many presentations but on specific field but not overall very well, let's see some concrete, sorry, sorry. Let's see some concrete um, uh, applications. The, we have worked with a number, <clears throat> a number of realization of the isotopic element. First of all, you should know that it was conceived to provide concrete and explicit realization of bombs hidden variables. And I'm convinced I've seen a number of theorems They convinced me <clears throat> that uh, the, the, the axiom of quantum mechanics in, the, uh, in, <clears throat> in their realization according to the Copenhagen school, this crucial, in the realization of the axiom according to the Copenhagen school, there exists no possibility for explicit, complete realization of bombs hidden value. However, if you maintain the axiom and you broaden a little bit the realization, 
then yes, the hidden, uh, the hidden variable bombs idea results to be bombs was correct in my view. And namely, because the moment you just uh, lift the, the product, the associated product, and then, uh, and then immediately you see the isotopic element is a direct representation of, um, of bombs in the variable with enormous implications. If we can do some application, you will see Pauli matrices in which rather than the conventional elements of the matrix, you see the bombs variable. That's non trivial because the, the, those matrices characterize uh, still by like spin one and a half. But then with the bombs variable, we can represent a um, man magnetic, uh, magnetic moment exactly, numerically exactly, and invariantly. So those are non trivial, uh, not only axiomatically, but even conceptual application. This is a realization that we, um, we use uh, most often in, real, uh, in relativistic treatment. It is given by a four by four matrix multiplied by, by an exponential term. The, the, the four by four matrix um, consists of a, a space part, the first three terms that um, uh, provide a representation of the dimension, not enough, and shape of the, of the, in this case, we refer to the nucleons. And the fourth element is the representation of the density of the nucleon normalized to the value one whenever the particle uh, uh, assumed approximated as being point like. Um, we have, we are, by using this realization of the of the isotopic level, we have been able to represent not only uh, exactly and invariantly over time, not only in a, a nuclear magnetic moment, at least for a number of us, uh, like nuclei, not for all nuclei. So I haven't done the calculation, I didn't have time, but at least for the light nuclei, we have not only a representation of the magnetic moment, but also of the spin, including um, uh, an apparent. Uh, resolution of the essentially old controversy regarding this, the spin one of the deuteron in the ground state. Uh, this will require a separate lecture in, uh, in, in the application. If you are interested, I'll be happy to do it. Very likely, whenever there is an, an opening, Dr. Page, whenever there is an opening, give me a couple of weeks' notice, <laughs> and I will, I will be delighted to, um, to discuss because some of these things. Have to be seen. See, this mathematics has to be seen alive in representing things that are impossible to represent. I, I, I do have, uh, I don't want to sort of distract you from your the flow of your lecture, but I, I do have some questions about the idea that this is related to Bohm's um, approach to quantum mechanics. Um, I, uh, I, I've spent quite a long time. You know, studying Bohm's approach, and I, I appreciate it very much. Um, but I'm not sure I see here the connection with with what might be considered hidden in in Bohm's theory. Um, so, from my point of view, I, I, I would say that the thing that is hidden in Bohm's theory would be the position of of a particle, in a sense, right? Um, so Bohm's theory does presume, I think, that that particles are point-like, uh, and the, the difference is that he that he's assuming that that there is um, well uh, maybe I should put it differently that that there is a, a relationship between the wave function and the particle motion referred to as the guidance condition, and so that. This guidance condition does not tell you where a particle is, but it tells you that a that that a particle does have a location, even though. Um, so it's so there's a, a very different approach in terms, of, say, compared to Copenhagen, where where we would say that that the uncertainty in the position is is in a sense a, a real statement about about the nature of the particle, so that that if you know it's um, exact momentum, then you are, have complete uncertainty about its position, etc. But Bohm is was very much counter that, like his 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 interpretation, and I would call it an interpretation as opposed to a realization, right? So so realization to me would be more like a representation of something, but but an interpretation is sort of like attaching. Physical significance to certain mathematical objects. Right? So, so with I don't know, with that background, just so I'm just wondering here that in your your expression here for t hat, 
you have these variables uh, n subscripted variables. Are, are these the variables that you're referring to as being hidden in quantum mechanics? Well, the, the <clears throat> I, I I share um, all your comments, all of them. I agree. The the the, the, the I agree with you. Also, the word uh, realization is debatable. I agree with you that uh, Bohm's study, you, were, you reproduced them correctly, refers specifically to point particles. Bohm was looking for a hidden variable within the context of quantum mechanics, but specifically Copenhagen School. So everything you stated is correct uh, indeed. And I agree. I agree. So the, 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 and, and, uh, so the basically what we, we see here, mainly for historical reason to provide the, uh, Bomb with um, just one second to provide bomb with um, with uh, with um, recognition that uh, that something um, was hidden in the sense that uh, is hidden in the axiom. You see, when um, you are at the abstract level, you don't see the, this um, isotopic product. So it is in that sense it is hidden in the axiom. Then when you look at um, when you just a moment. I apologize. Then, um, when you, then when you look at the realization, and then the realization, uh, the, you need the structural uh, the redefinition of bombs. <clears throat> you will see in, in a moment, just beginning with the numbers. <clears throat> so, bombs original conception is not applicable. Uh, not applicable. I agree with you fully. Nevertheless, let me be honest. <clears throat> out of um, recognition of his effort that um, that indeed uh, bomb bomb was a great uh, intuitional uh, stimulus for me because i was looking for something hidden something hidden and i found that this in a broader broader realization so in that sense i felt um, i felt uh, an appreciation but again the word um, bombs variable had to be redefined to be understood so um, this so way uh, this way all That's... those characteristics are hidden in the axiom, in the in, in the sense that to, to be seen, they require a broadening of the realization of the associated product. In that sense, I hope this answers your very very qualified question. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, so basically, so this expression allowed us to achieve to achieve the, <clears throat> the basic numbers that we wanted in nuclear physics as a premise to start uh, pre predicting some, some nuclear fusion and eventually start some industrial test, <clears throat> God willing. Another application I would like to um, list right away is, um, is, a, is, um, is a characterization of a covering of the notion of quantum entanglement that, uh, um, that was introduced, uh, introduced at the 2020 teleconference on Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, it is still under consideration and study. So, um, so I will appreciate any criticism, any comment indeed. Those are fundamental issues. And I call this um, covering notion, I, 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 should, I recommend it to be called the Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen entanglement because the originators are Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen. So they justly deserve uh, to have their name. A little bit like uh, the situation of bombs in the variable as, a, as the originator deserves some uh, acknowledgement. So what is the idea here? <clears throat> the idea is the particles that are, that a, one particle has um, uh, visually uh, uh, as a web packet, which is as big as the universe. The web packet of one electron is identically null only at the universe, at the end of the, the universe, at infinity. So the, the, the volume here, in this case, will become the entire universe. But um, in, <clears throat> in those particles, the wave packets of the, the particle is in continuous, in continuous contact. contact uh, so the hypothesis here, the conjecture, or if you want the conception, I should say, of DPR entanglement is that the particles, after they've been initially bonded together and then separated, remain in continuous and instantaneous, continuous and instantaneous communications at whatever mutual distance we are referring to via the overlapping mutual penetration of their wave packet. I studied a number of papers of waves in water, but they all try to use potential. They end up using potential. I'm sorry, I cannot accept potential. I see no potential of any type here. 
just a contact interaction with no potential equal possible. And if you add the potential, then you end up with violation of the, the efficiency of waves that propagates for miles and miles. This is, a, this is an extreme efficiency, typically of non-potential non forces. So um, the problem was how to represent mathematically um, um, waves that could be as big as the universe, and they are in, in neutral penetration one with the others. And uh, this was impossible to do it via the applied mathematics of the 20th century. The, 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 the hope, the hope I should stress, is that with the iso mathematics and isoproduct of this type, indeed, uh, this will have for two electrons, we will have, this will be as big as the universe. The density will be one, as indicated for the electrons. But then um, the, the important part is here, that um, which is uh, carefully look at the minus sign here. So this, uh, this expression, this isotopically is also an infinite, very, very extremely small. It's the foundation of the recovering of Einstein the determinism or progressive recovering, I should say. The, the, but so the, so those are the non-non-non interactions. The, the, the interactions are the most general interactions that I know. Namely, the most general interactions are non-linear, not only in anything you want, but not only particular non-linear in the wave function. Um, and uh, <clears throat> And uh, and um, as well as uh, as well as non-local, there's all sort of namely uh, overlapping over volumes, of course, and then of course not derivable. So so there's a typical. This is most general non-Hamiltonian interaction. Essentially, I can formulate it uh, uh, concretely. And um, and uh, the um, and at least we have uh, we have a mathematical uh, representation. I shall indicate that um, I shall indicate very briefly that when I was uh, teaching physics at Boston University, I, I corresponded with Professor Heisenberg. He was alive in the 70s. He was a very, very nice, and he was a young, <laughs> a young little uh, physics professor. So um, it was very nice, and we discussed his nonlinear completion of quantum mechanics, the first in history. But in which, but he wanted to use uh, Hamiltonian. It, it was frozen in Hamiltonian, so the the wave function was was part of the Hamiltonian. So you end up with the equations which are fantastic, the equation. But there was a basic problem uh, that I could not uh, I, I I could not accept. Namely, it, his his completion violates the superposition principle, because then you cannot decompose the the, the total wave function in the component. Uh, and this would prohibit me to characterize a constituent of a nucleus. So I could not accept, with all due respect, uh, our correspondent, correspondent uh, ended with, um, with this identification, the violation of the superposition and the impossibility of recovering it. The moment you assume the, uh, an ISO, ISO product, as we will see, the, this, uh, this preservation of all axioms, all quantum mechanical axioms with no exclusion, is a monolithic structure. All quantum mechanical axioms are preserved. And we approve this in all way, including the superposition principle. So that's what the embedding of the wave function in the isotopic element allow me indeed to have a, a nonlinear theory that was a nonlinear completion of quantum mechanics that was somewhat uh, workable with concrete applications. Uh, and I'm not, this is a fundamental notion. Please, if you have additional comments. Oh, Excuse me, uh, one uh, question. Uh, the the uh, gamma factor that you are using uh, have some kind of uh, symmetry? Um, no, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Excellent question. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, um, normally, in the way that isomathematics is an isoscalar, we will see in a moment is a function multiplied by the isotopic element. And the only question has to be positive, the only condition has to be positive definite. But the functional dependence is monstrous and it is totally arbitrary. It has to be positive definite so that this negative, so this value of this, uh, this isotopic element this is uh, smaller, infinitesimal, as I indicated before, as a condition to recover the progressive recovery Einstein determinism. Remember, <clears throat> remember that this, this thing uh, is the most general for symmetric space, symmetric uh, mat <clears throat> matrix in, in, in a three plus one dimension. As a particular case, this is also can be Schwarzschild. And that's why we, um, we um, uh, that's why we recover uh, full uh, the, uh, the, the standard determinism is recover entirely and identically at the limit of the Schwarzschild horizon because by working only in space in three-dimensional space because this essentially tends to zero tends to zero and therefore the, the uncertainty tends to zero 
in that case, but this I require a separate lecture to be reviewed. I'm sorry, I, I should not even have touched those, <laughs> this, this issue, but this is one of the application of, uh, there are many, many application of this type of, uh, so to answer your maybe, question, maybe. I, I do not know, besides the, to being positive definite, to be an isoscale, I do not know other. Thank you. Maybe I can, can I ask, maybe I ask a similar question. Please, please. About, about symmetries, right? Um, so, for example, um, uh, Jesus was asking about gamma and its functional dependence, say, on, for example, on R. Right? I, pres I presume that you mean by R the position, right? Yes, so, so, so relative, one might, pre relative, one might uh, presume as like spatial um, uh, anisotropy, right? That that. Uh, that if the sign of R is changed, then we don't change the value of, of gamma, for example. Right? Um. Let me be honest, and this, we have studied many, many uh, isotopy of uh, all possible space-time symmetry. We spent decades in studying this, but we have never studied the symmetries of the isotopic element. We have never studied that uh, this uh, the symmetry, and I'm sorry, I apologize. Mm -hmm. But your question is very pertinent. The symmetry of the isotopic element, the, then we have to see if they are shared by the rest of the, the rest of the formulation. Uh, um, and um, and uh, but it is uh, very intriguing. Indeed. Like for example, I mean the, the implications would be related to conservation of momentum, for example. Um, but the, con the conservation has to be at the isotopic element. So it will be the isoconservation of the isotopic element. We will see it in a moment, uh, yes. Not at the level of uh, uh, conventional um, mathematics, no. It will not make sense in this formulation. The isotopic product has to apply to the totality of the product of the formulation with no exception that I, uh, that I am aware of to avoid uh, hidden inconsistency in the, in the formulation. Mm -hmm. But this will be an intriguing, Intriguing problem, yes, to study not only the symmetry of the isotopic element, the relationship with the space-time isosymmetry that uh, we'll we'll discuss in. A, I cannot discuss this physical aspect in this lecture. It's just just pure mathematics. How about going from one energy to one and two in that product defining t hat? Uh, could you please repeat? I have a poor reception. Yeah, that alpha is it going from one to n or just over the first two, one and two? And, it should the, be overall uh, alpha. Let me see because uh, this has been prepared very quickly because I had other commitment. The, this for the case of two electrons and not um, one and two for the case of two electrons. We were illustrating Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen for two electrons, or if you want two nucleons, so a proton and a neutron. But for the case of a nucleus, there's to be extended to n uh, from one to n, depending on the number of uh, depend on the number of nucleons in a nucleus. Yeah. And uh, the R is the <clears throat> R is the relative coordinates, and uh, basically, so here uh, the product of uh, characterize different neutrons, and this uh, represents the overlapping, partial overlapping of the, the charge distribution. Uh, with uh, um, therefore, the, you'll see the wave function of all nucleons, mo uh, not only there in the nonlinear. Uh, uh, sorry, in the, no, I'm sorry, not only in, in the nonlinear form. But also, you, know, you you'll see the the the, the, the volume uh, volume integral of the of the of the wave function, uh, because then uh, when, because when that volume integral uh, tends to zero, basically you exit from what we call the well, this is our physical notion we call the, the Adronic horizon. Basically, you exit from um, from the range of applicability of um, of, um, of uh, Adronic mechanics or isomechanics. Which is 10 to minus 13 centimeters, and you return to regain quantum mechanics entirely and identically. Incidentally, okay. this, um, this, uh, this, uh, okay. you can see the horizon from here because this is extremely small. So um, you, you go outside uh, over 10 to the minus 13 centimeters, this is essentially one. This expression is essentially one. Which means, uh, can uh, I, uh, maybe I can hope to explain, or, or at least my interpretation of Dr. Sotrek's uh, question. Please. Please, like, very interesting question. His question, I think, was about just the symbol alpha, and, and the fact that you have you write uh, the product of alpha one and two 
in the first part of your formula, uh, but in the uh, later, the second line, you're referring to alpha as ranging from one to n. Uh, <laughs> yes. And yes, so, but... so the question I think was, is that product intended to be uh, alpha going one to n or just one to two? I apologize again, this lack of final control of, of my transparency. Also, my eyes are, are poor because I've written too many papers. So the, the for, so alpha characterize the number of particles that are entangled. So for the case of two electron or two uh, uh, proton or two uh, proton and neutron, then the, um, the alpha goes from one to two. But here, <laughs> in, in, instead for the case of n uh, particles to be entangled, the case of no nucleus, then has to be one to n, but here and there, of course, has to be the same. And this is another imperfection okay. of my transparency that I apologize. No, it's, a, it's just just a matter of being very clear about what you mean. Absolutely, indeed. There's a number of, number of particles. Alpha is characterized the number of particles that are entangled. Entangled. That's, uh, that's thank, it. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for asking. <laughs> OK, if there are no additional questions, let's go to, let's go to the implication. Now, here is the, um, um, give me just one second. I apologize, it was very hot here. I thought that. So let's see that now the first, uh, the second stumbling, um, stumbling block of, uh, uh, that requires some, uh, requires some, uh, requires some, uh, some attention. The, um, the, uh, so the, the and, uh, particular conceptual effort in my view, and it regards the, the implication of this very simple isotopy. Let me check that it is correct. I apologize now. Yes, the, the isotopic uh, product is written correctly with the hat of the T and the hat of the I everywhere. So it is correct. Yes, indeed. Now, the first implication of, the, of lifting the associative product is, the, in my view, the necessary abandonment of the historical classification of uh, numbers in the, into the, in the real complex and quaternion excluding octonium because they are non-associated. The reason, the reason is the following. You see them, this, we mentioned before this majestic property of quantum mechanics, namely, <laughs> namely, namely that, uh, that preserves the same numerical value at the same, uh, at the same condition at different time. And that's the reason why, because, the, because the, the time evolution is unitary. It presents the number one, which is the multiplicated unit. Now, suppose you, 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 you consider a deformation theory. I was the first to propose PQ deformation of Lie algebra as part of my PhD thesis in 1967, published in Novo Cimento. Then it was not uh, quoted by, well, it was known, but not quoted by McFarlane and, and by, by my, um, <laughs> and then 10 or 20,000 papers on deformation later on never quoted me. I never complained, never. The reason being because um, I consider all those papers not mathematically very interesting, but uh, physically I, I cannot accept them. There's the reason why. Because the, when you said this type of deformation theory defined on a conventional numeric field, basically the time evolution becomes non-unitary. What does it mean? It means that, that um, the non-unitary transformation uh, changes the value of the number one. The one becomes something else, may become a function. But this implies that the deformation theory loses the, the, the numeric field over which it is defined over time. Therefore, I can see no, no experimental verification that is consistent in my view. This was the case of all papers that we wrote up to early in the 1990s. All papers were defined on a conventional numeric field. It is my view, none of them can, can be used as written but for uh, experimental verification, I, 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 would, I would not accept experimental verification of our own work to begin with. One, uh, because the, the, because it was, it is, here is the mono, monolithic situation. Each and every step has to be lifted. You miss one and you end up with the inconsistency. I also should stress that this is a physical requirement. Mathematicians know they can formulate their algebra over any field that you want, but it was a physical restriction. So, um, so it was out of desperation in the early uh, 1990s that uh, finally I, I had the courage to re-examine um, 
the abstract axiom of a numeric field. I didn't do for years, but my respect for a while, Weierstrass, Hamilton, and so many, these were my mentors. But finally, I had to have that um, years and years, that decade of work it was it had to be thrown away. So I had the courage. The moment I had that courage, immediately became evident <clears throat> that the abstract axiom, a numeric field, do not necessarily require that the number one, uh, that the multiplicative unit has to be the number one. No. There is no restriction whatsoever. So the, the multiplicative unit can be a, a, anything you desire, uh, any quantity you desire, scalar function, operator, matrix, pro, uh, even outside the original field, provided that the only condition is that it has to be a positive, definite. And this, this, uh, this observation uh, the, led to the, the, the construction of the so called ISO, ISO numbers and ISO fields, in which I had nice theorems to present. But if I do this, I, I, I have other important crucial steps that I would like to present. So let's see here very conceptually. You start with the conventional numeric fields again over a field of characteristic. Uh, this is conventional numeric fields of characteristic zero. Okay, so you have an ordinary number we describe, uh, conventional multiplication, conventional sum, multiplicative unit one as the multiplicative unit, zero as the additive unit, and so on. We did we did uh, lift the 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 the, uh, the additive part of there, but there is no need in physics. So from now on, everything I will say will leave the sum and the additive unit unchanged. So we are only talking about the multiplication. So suppose you consider a ring of what we call uh, ISON numbers that are written here, and hat which are given by the product of an ordinary number multiplied by the ISO unit. If you have a ring of those numbers um, and you equip them with, um, with what we call the ISO product, uh, with, in which characterized by, by an element uh, hat T, which is the inverse of the multiplicative ISO unit, then under those conditions, this ring of ISO number verifies all axioms of a field. And it, actually at the abstract level, when you go up to abstract realization free level, you can use the same uh, equation of an ordinary number only subjected to a different uh, representation. So this is the notion of I, which is crucial I, for everything else. Please, uh, please. Like this, this, this step in your, your development uh, surely must be sort of frightening to a mathematician, right? I mean, <laughs> um, at least to be clear exactly what's meant here, right? Um, so, for example, when you, when you refer to n, th this represents just an ordinary number. Is that what you you mean? That like is correct. A... Specific can only represent the real complex or quaternionic number, not octonion, because octonion by uh, uh, the famous problem of <laughs> connected with non-associativity, that's why we cannot use octonion. I mean like a, a associative di division algebra or something like that. Right? So that yes, um, octonions are excluded by this. Because they're not associative. But 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 in any case, when, when you were talking about uh, numbers of this kind like so so you're beginning with the notion of a field right because that is correct these yes. real field yes the real numbers so so is it correct that that your your first f could be said to be the real numbers is that I'm not, not sure. sure well they're the well, iso, iso real number they are the let, let me uh, let me ask it another way Right. Please, so that, so that, that if I knew abstractly a ring and someone told me how to define the inverse of every element, um, then I would say that if you give me that ring, I can give you a field provided that I know how to, to take the inverse. So in that abstract algebraic sense, the use of the word field, of course, is just uh, yet another type of algebraic object but with a different axiom regarding the existence of a unique inverse um, that is absolutely correct indeed there's a long yeah, list so, of properties so, that are verified that is correct so when you say iso numbers i mean i 
I mean, does it mean something different than just an abstract field? No, at, uh, the, 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 this, they're talking about the realization, again, okay? realization of, of, the, of, uh, of the axiom for a numeric field that they are mainly realized by, uh, instead of using the conventional uh, product is used the isoproduct. This implies uh, to, to have a closure to, uh, to verify all the axiom of a field, including the inverse, et cetera, associativity. is a long list that I, I should have um, added, but then I missed you know, presenting the part of the end of the, the, the talk. But <clears throat> the, um, the, the <coughs> so the, essentially the, <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank God this is an informal meeting and I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. <coughs> this is definitely this is an informal meeting and it's a meeting between friends who are trying to understand uh, you know different approaches uh, and uh, any any questions that I have, for example, are, are not intended to be uh, sort of uh, uh, controversial or, or like critical, but rather for my own understanding. And, of course, uh, your, all your questions are fantastic. Uh, no, no. And so, in any case, I'm looking for criticism. No, all your questions. So, are... Well, so uh, my, my motivation here was just from the point of view of the abstract algebraic definitions of, of things, you know, such as uh, 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 a ring, uh, a field, uh, an algebra. I mean, each of these things have a very you know, particular abstract uh, set of axioms that, that they obey as mathematical objects. And, and so I, I, I'm just struggling to understand what you could possibly mean by, by a number but then an ISO number. <laughs> so, so like, I had, so, well, I, I had a, an item potent, for example, just like T hat was an item potent. It could be it, as a particular case. More than yes. one item potent. You have a sum of item potents equal to one. That, you know, that's like the structure of a, a diagonal matrix, for example. Yes, diagonal matrix. So, let me try to formulate it. Uh, if I remember one of the many definitions. Uh, the, um, uh, let uh, uh, ordinary f to be an ordinary field of characteristic zero with ordinary with numbers and product, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then um, and let uh, uh, hat high be a positive definite uh, quantity, whether function or scalar, uh, outside uh, outside the original field. <laughs> then the the infinite. We are talking about an infinite class of images of isotopic images. Of the original field called is called an isofield when it verifies all the axiom of a field. And to verify all the axiom of a field, one of the conditions is that the elements have to have this structure, the product has to have this structure, so that the, 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 so the, 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 there exists the inverse, blah, 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 blah. So by we're talking about an infinite class of images of uh, images of the original one that maintain the definition of a uh, the def but man uh, com continues to ver verify the axiom of a field provided this is crucial, provided the elements of the ring, if you want, uh, this level is just a, a nice ring, if you want, then the element have this structure, uh, in order the original number n multiplied by the multiplied by the uh, i. And then the, all, the, all the axioms are verified. And, the, and then um, everything else. Uh, so, so, I, so for like very very elementary example, for example, like if I started with say n being the real numbers, then could I lift in your sense to say complex numbers? So, it, it so the, unit. Yes. yes. So yes. so of course the the unit of the complex numbers is it just happens to be very similar to the unit of real numbers, but but conceptually it's something different. Um, Yes. But it has the structure of a field. I mean, namely, I know how to invert elements and so forth. Uh, similarly, I could do the same thing, say, between, say, real numbers and uh, four, four, four by four square matrices of real numbers, for example, oh, yes. where 
except then I start to have problems, right? Because not all all uh, four by four matrices are invertible, right? Well, and so well, maybe not, but if they are multiplied by 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 appropriate uh, four by four matrix as a new ISO unit, it may, might be invertible. We don't know. It has to be checked out. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I, Excuse Dr. me. Subject, I think your microphone is off. Uh, you, you had a comment? Uh, I'd like you to make a comment. Yes, um, yes, Jesus, go ahead. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, uh, I uh, think that uh, we can see this re re relation uh, something like uh, uh, one uh, factor ring, uh, the uh, ISO numbers. Is a factor ring, factor ring, of, uh, of uh, isofields. Uh, I think that, that we can make th this kind of lecture for this re uh, definition that uh, Professor Santilli is, is making. Yes, there is the direct connection here. <laughs> yes, indeed, the, the field of ison, what we call ison number, very broad. And uh, incidentally, regarding matrices, uh, the, uh, they are not. Uh, you see, the, this definition, that this definition applies only for when they are, the n are ordinary number, and not matrices. For the very reason you indicated, uh, Dr. Page, namely that not necessarily all matrices are invertible, but all numbers n are invertible. <laughs> and since the i is positive, definite, definite, the isomorphic number are invertible automatically verified. The condition of um, and all the other condition for uh, it's very easy to verify all the but the, but the field is very very rich the the ISO number I mean to, to confuse your idea um, the I the, uh, the capital I can also be an ordinary number <laughs> so as a particular case called ISO field of class one but then uh, suppose I assume um, as an ISO number uh, the number uh, the, the number three then um, then. Um, one uh, two multiplied by three is equal to two and no longer is equal to six and uh, and uh, two multiplied in the isotopic sense and most uh, most uh, most uh, most un, uh, strangely then uh, the number four becomes prime becomes prime because no longer um, uh, so so this this one of the field that not yet investigated uh, the, the many many aspects that have not been investigated it appears that uh, that prime numbers are indeed they, they do exist in you know, the all of them the very famous number but they um, uh, the way we know that as a number now they are they're all when the, the multiplicative unit is the number one if you change the multiplicative unit then the numerical value of the prime number is changed they still exist but uh, the, but it's changed this is a point that has never been published or, or investigated. There are a number of those. Uh, those I, I guess I, I still have a very serious conceptual problem here, right? For example, with what you mean by unit, right? So, so if <laughs> I have, if if I take a unit and I square it, I expect to get the unit back, right? Yes, indeed, right. A, a crucial axiom. So, so if I if I say three is a unit. If I say three times three is, we don't no, get three. No, so I don't, no, I don't no. understand this as unit. I, I mean, I have some fundamental conceptual problem here with what you're saying. This is pre 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 perfectly normal, because what you are you are mixing conventional uh, uh, conventional mathematics and iso mathematics. This is all, all perfectly normal because uh, this, this is uh, because uh, sure the square. Uh, but has to be the, the, the ISO unit becomes an axiom, and an axiom uh, uh, verifies not the condition that the square of the unit has to be one. No, this is not request, requested by the axiom. No, no, not the square of unit equals one. Square of unit it's equals not, unit. A, is the axiom of, of the ISO of a multiplicative unit. We're talking about the axiom of a multiplicative unit is the, the ISO unit multiplied by any, any number, in this case, any number. But here is the point. The multiplication has to be isotopic, so there is a sandwich of the isotopic element in between, and the, the so, um, iso unit iso multiplied by iso number is equal to an iso number iso multiplied by the iso unit. This is equal to the to the, um, the, the iso number for all possible uh, iso number of the ring considered. So that's the axiom that is required for the iso unit, not the square. It happens that uh, for the number one, the square is one. 
But uh, however, if I, uh, I said before, you correctly say, if I assume one, two, one, um, uh, two, three for unit, then uh, then for iso multiplicate by unit, then three more, very five is the axiom of an of a, of a iso unit, not an action axiom for the unit, because we are talking about. Uh, the iso okay, oh, maybe I see a bit what I, what is causing me a bit of problem. Let me uh, just uh, underline here these these two symbols, right? So so yeah. you you have written a star on the right hand side, but a cross on the left hand side, right? So so the the star on the right hand side is is what you call the iso multiplication. That is correct. Yeah, and so so this iso multiplication incorporates this uh, deformation in a sense, right? Um, so okay, so now maybe I'm starting to understand. So so I'm just trying to to see how I can turn uh, how how I can keep the the name of something as being a unit. So if I say 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 three is the identity uh, in my new algebra, then in order for it to be the identity, I need to have three star three equals three, right? But it's star three, right? So so star three star three is is something different than multiplying because three by three in the yeah, usual yeah. sense of the word, right? That's correct because you have the limit. Iso multiplication. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, so okay, I think I'm starting then, to get. The or it, so it could be just three mod two then, right? Three mod two is equal to one. Well, it depends on the the, the, the isotopic element has to be the inverse of the of the iso unit. That's the crucial uh, to to verify the axiom of the field it has to be necessarily the inverse. In other words, when you talk about the iso field, you got to use the totality of iso uh, iso mathematics. You'll see in a moment the, the, the operation and so on. Then and then you see that everything uh, works. But yeah. be careful not to use conventional product, yeah. conventional unit. Uh, no, everything has to be lifted totality. Yeah. So uh, then you written here with, with that I just underlined. That that's just sort of you written wrote it in symbols. What I said. Uh, verbally, right, is that that uh, if I take two iso elements, uh, n hat and m hat, and I iso multiply them uh, at the lower level, like so. The, so the first part is the lifted side, but the second part of the equality is what's happening beneath, right? That is correct. So, yeah. so we we need to take. In, in order to interpret the star operation, right, we, we need to know what is this uh, operator T. It's the, right? inverse, and, it's the inverse of the multiplicative unit. Yep. Yeah, and then T yeah. is related to this, this yeah. I hat, right? Yeah. This is, so this is so indication. ultimately we just multiply N by M and then we <clears throat> do something like I hat to it. Yes. And we end, we get three star three equals three, right? Because that of the meaning of star, right? See, here you have an isotopic element on the hat, and here you have um, an isotopic isomultiplication, iso unit. Here you have the isotopic element, they cancel out. So, what you end up, you end up with nm multiplied by the iso unit, which is an iso number. So, multiplication of iso numbers gives you iso numbers that uh, for all possible n and m. Uh, uh, as uh, the original field for the totality of the element. You, um, if you look carefully, you will. Very, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't do it to be a summary. That, um, but if you look carefully, you verify the totality of the condition, uh, axiomatic condition of a numeric field are verified under those uh, those simple as uh, condition. The rings has to be in a ring of iso number. In which there's a number, ordinary number multiplied by the, uh, this uh, ISO unit, the only condition has to be positive definite. Then you will see, and then the multiplication has to be has to be a star multiplication with the T being the inverse of the ISO number, isotopic element 
under those conditions, all action of the numeric fields are verified for whatever positive definite value of, uh, of the multiplicative ISO unit you want to select. That would, I know it for sure. And uh, there is, I mean, this is a, if you want to look in detail, this mathematical aspect that there is this paper that the, which I introduced the ISO number is a long memoir. And uh, or there is a monograph by my, the um, Chinese mathematician Yang, uh, Foundation of uh, Santilli ISO number theory, in which all those uh, axioms are verified in all uh, all the necessary necessary details. But let me let me let me let me complicate. Uh, excuse me, I'm I'm sorry to. Uh... I, I think. Um, and Garrett, uh, your your question of uh, or your analogy with with say um, um, modular arithmetic uh, it doesn't follow this pattern as as far as I I understand. And this uh, it is a kind of an isotopy, but it is a full your isotopy. Your microphone is your microphone is not on. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. One other thing was with T hat is an idempotent. So it looks like it behaves something like an idempotent with some other structure involved. Yeah. Well, this is a particular case. In this case, notice that this is not written for T as an idempotent. The, the isotopic product for an idempotent, then the iso number becomes is equal to, to a capital T multiplied by a number multiplied by a T. And the multiplication becomes uh, more complex. Be careful; it's a completely different. Uh, when um, when you want to use the idempotent I, I, I realization of the axiom of associativity, then uh, yes, yes, there exists and um, uh, and um, whether well, the iso number exists under that, uh, but they're much more complex. And we found no no physical application for the, that particular case. We use this one; is amply sufficient for all we do so far. Maybe I should have presented a more formal definition. I apologize, and <laughs> the idea of no, I, I, but I, I just think it, what I said earlier that it that it's sort of frightening, right? Because when when you present this, it's like whoa, like you're you're starting to to do something very strange. It it seems at first, right? That you that you're redefining even what's meant by numbers. So. So it's like you're re removing sort of the foundations because foundations are so, you know, basic. Uh, it, well, it's maybe it just a matter of the way the way you present it that that doesn't need to be quite so uh, hmm, frightening. Maybe <laughs> I, I don't know if you know what I mean by the word frightening. Yeah, right? I'm not a like politician. Maybe. I'm just a, I, I, <laughs> then. Uh, the, the the but it is correct. This is you know again unless you introduce you generalize the numbers, there is no possibility of achieving a numerical prediction that are invariant over time. No, there is not uh, because the you see the the, <coughs> the ISO unit represents all the characteristics of the quantity. So unless you maintain the value, numerical value of the ISO unit, then, uh, then uh, you, you don't have a consistent physical model. So would a, would a simple example, for example, just the real numbers be an ISO number system with the simplest example? What's yes, the... I, can, I can give it to you. For, for instance, for a non-relativistic, non um, the first non-relativistic model of the deuteron, <clears throat> It's non-relativistic, so the ISO unit is only in, uh, it is reduced to the exponent. So is the exponent is the minus um, ratio of uh, wave function multiplied by the integral uh, 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 integral over the entire um, universe of the of the wave function themselves, normalizing the wave function. But this essentially what it does. It it changes the it verifies the last statement by by in Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, namely that the wave function of quantum mechanics cannot represent the entire physical in our case chemical reality, and this change allows us, for instance, to consider for instance two world valence electron. Quantum chemistry cannot possibly represent the attraction between the two electrons. 
in a valence bond because they, they have the same charge. You do high school calculations, they repel each other with an astronomical repulsive force. By using the, the, this mapping, this lifting, this completion, by, by lifting the product everywhere, the product everywhere has to be multiplied with the, the, the isotopic element being the inverse of what I indicated, the exponent. Then uh, the, remember in the exponent, you have nonlinear interaction, but uh, so basically what it does, it changes the structure of the wave function. And indeed we move from a highly repulsive Coulomb potential from strongly attracting for attra potential, for instance, Halton potential. And uh, we have proved that this allows a representation of the exact representation of um, a numerical value of the hydrogen and water molecule and the number of applications. This was a very, very simple realization of the ISO, ISO unit, just an exponent, to, uh, an exponent to, um, um, of this, uh, ra uh, the ratio of, of wave function multiplied by a volume. It has to be nonlinear in the wave function as well as non-local expressing the interaction over, over a volume. And uh, you, you, uh, you, you, it's something impossible to do in quantum mechanics. Well, the mechanics it's impossible to represent an attraction among the identical electrons that they repel with such an astronomical point. Hundreds of newtons, the repulsion, this high school calculation. And uh, by doing this, uh, this mathematics, yes, you can. So you have to see it from, um, but the numbers in this case, in this case, the, in, in this case, the ISO unit is just an exponent, the exponent of a complicated ratio of wave function and integral over wave function. That's what the ISO unit is. In other cases, there may be a numerical um, in, um, in uh, I'm just about to say in the next slide, other, other application. But let me, since the, the scaring part of, the scaring part of, um, uh, has been already identified, let me, let me indicate what is the scariest part of them all in my view. In my view is that the ISO numbers, ISO numbers, in my view, they represent volumes. And I have no other way. This, uh, I'm honest with you. That's the only way I can handle this. Uh, that why, for many reasons. First of all, because the ISO unit represents volume. If it's a non-relativistic in space, otherwise can be in the space time. So, so that therefore this is the dominant part. So this is a volume and not, and not a number. So you have to change from things you want to recall in volumes, volume one, volume two, volume three. But um, I could find no, no other way. Why so? Because the, the, we want to represent extended particles. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, but then, this representation has to be consistent, has to be monolithic everywhere. And if you miss this extension somewhere, you end up with the inconsistency. And everything is referred that, to. I think that's, that's interesting in a way because it, it connects with Clifford algebras in some, yes. some, some not so obvious way, perhaps. But but volumes in Clifford algebra are are not the units, but rather pseudo pseudo units in a sense, right? Well, in con with conventional mathematics, yeah, but <laughs> but you have to reformulate it in isomathematics. All product that to be isotopic, square root have to be isotopic, quotient isotopic, power have to be isotopic, etc. But we can. I, I think that. I think sure, yeah. that uh, uh, we can re realize uh, one uh, uh, more example. Uh, uh, and uh, I think that the key uh, definition here is the, the definition of the, the transformation of a unit. Uh, if, if, if you uh, take this um, relation, uh, for example, uh, take a unique uh, and convert to um, uh, for example, a uh, complex uh, exponential, no? uh, compl uh, com complex exponential, then you, you, you can uh, uh, make all the rest of the operation with this definition, uh, de definition without problems, uh, without problem. Because uh, in, in, in this definition of uh, uh, transformation of unit, you have uh, all the essential uh, um, terms that you require for uh, the, the rest of the operation. Uh, multiplication uh, is changing 
by star uh, product. And uh, here you have a T hat that, that is the uh, related with uh, I star, uh, excuse me, I, I hat then uh, uh, there is no problem with this uh, uh, transformation and uh, you can uh, get the ch uh, interchange all the numbers uh, uh, isofuels to uh, iso numbers only using this definition of, uh, of, uh, of identity. I, I think that, that there is no problem because uh, we, we can uh, then now uh, um, think about any kind of uh, quant uh, of uh, abstract abstract quantity using in this interchange of units, and then you build all uh, all the new uh, operations from 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 here. Mm. Uh, I think that that, that uh, is. Uh, this is the way that we, we can understand the, uh, this. And there's just one other thing. What about zero? Maybe zero is unique. Zero any isoform. No, no. You need uh, you need that uh, this i is uh, uh, definite uh, positive definite. Yes. Zero is the additive additive unit. That we do not change the addition. <coughs> Sorry, Professor Cruz, what you stated is absolutely correct. You see, you will see in a moment that the entire isomathematics can be constructed by a non-unitary transformation of uh, conventional mathematics. So you go from one, one is mapped in the high art and the product uh, NM, for instance, for numeric fields, automatically is map mapped into the ISO product. You will see in a moment to coming up. Uh, so there is a unique relationship in which can be, only we're talking about the infinite family for any given number or field, we have an infinite variety because we can have an infinite variety of ISO units or because we have an infinite variety of non-unitary transformation. Back to the-, I, the I should mention, uh... I should mention the time is is progressing, and we're we are interrupting so. with so many questions. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think but, uh, if, if we very we could we page, could uh, uh, we we could uh, perhaps agree to continue for say ten minutes or fifteen minutes. Um, but then I think uh, most of us probably have other obligations for today, of course. even though we're very interested and excited by your presentation. So uh, <laughs> this, if, you, if you could at least continue uh, for a little while and at least maybe reach to some point at which we can uh, continue or resume at a later date. <laughs> that is uh, very, very understandable. At your disposal, just tell me when to stop and that this is it. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I just want to see the show that the, all operations are uh, have to be lifted. Uh, this is the K by ISO power, the, 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 the ISO square root, the, and of course the, the, the ISO inverse and so on. They are all uh, all changed. Here is the, an application to the cryptograms. Uh, they're called ISO cryptogram when, when you include, when, um, when an ISO cryptogram is a cryptogram formulated with ISO mathematics, and so define it on an ISO field. On an ISO field, so so the ISO unit can be changed in an ISO cryptograms, and here is a proposition that um, that um, in the, in the solution of uh, it's possible that the solution of a of an ISO cryptogram may 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 require an infinite period of time in the event the ISO unit is continuously changed. In other words, the, the hacker can uh, looks for the solution of a of a cryptogram. But even it takes a few milliseconds. During that millisecond, there is an, there may be an algorithm changing the ISO unit. In this case, uh, the, um, basically, like the cat, uh, the hacker is like a cat uh, looking at um, looking at um, looking at uh, trying to bite his tail. We got some money out of about the ISO mathematics, believe it or not. Soon after the appearance um, of the um, of the volume of uh, elements of Adron, volume one elements of Adronic mechanics, because the a uh, cryptographic company from England, from London, working on um, the security of um, uh, British uh, 
the credit card the essentially they purchased the right for of this idea for the for Europe. So at least we got someone. Here's an idea of a, of a simple password that becomes very complicated. I've seen password of, uh, reduced very easily to a full page. The, um, then there is the notion of, um, of an ISO function. Well, first of all, isoscalar. An isoscalar in, in our language is an element of an ISO field. So it has to be the structure of an ordinary number multiplied by the ISO unit. An ISO function is the same as a function multiplied by the ISO unit, but, but here uh, coordinates are now represents volume. Again, this is crucial to achieve a, a representation of, um, of extended particles. And um, so when you think of the wave function, and this is a Cartesian or a, um, Euclidean coordinate, now from a, po a point becomes a volume, a volume characterized thanks to the ISO unit, which has crucial value. Let me, let me see them. This is um, this is a year of um, this is a isovector isospaces. Uh, the element of isovectors defined over an iso field, and they're called isovector uh, uh, isospace when they verify all the axioms of the field. Again, this is the main conceptual point. At every step, there is the insistence of maintaining the original abstract, abstract axiom at all level, at the level of an associative envelope, at the level of a numeric field, here at the level of um, vector space, of course, Minkowski space. Um, incidentally, the metric here is the most general metric that I know in, in three plus one dimension that includes a particular case, all symmetric um, metric, uh, not only Minkowski, Riemann, Fins, Larian, and of gain, and et cetera, et cetera. So the, this is kind of a unification in a unification of different uh, geometry. In, if you may look at it in this way, this, this is a crucial point, and then I will, perhaps I can stop here. Uh, There's the notion of iso locality, iso linearity, iso locality, and um, and iso unitarity. Remember the the, the problems of, uh, of having a nonlinear tier. Nonlinear tier does not allow any symmetry. Riemannian geometry, you cannot formulate the symmetry of Riemannian in a Riemannian geometry because the theory is nonlinear. So there is no chance, this is well known. And <clears throat> so, so if we had constructed a mathematic that was highly nonlinear, we would end up with a mathematic in which we couldn't call, compute the, the symmetry. In this case, we will be the, the, the startup. So the whole effort is to, to show that at the abstract level, isomathematic is indeed linear. This is called isolinear. You can see it here. This is a conventional linear transformation. This is the, the, the isotopy image. In the, remember, this is an iso number. This is a, the star operation. But then when you look, um, so from an abstract viewpoint, this is perfectly linear and very fine indeed the axiom of linearity. But if you look at explicitly, there's an dependence and an enormous dependence here on all uh, those various functions. The same for unitarity. This is iso unitarity on iso space over an iso field. Remember, here is the iso unit. But then, you know, unitary transformation can be, uh, be written in this way and uh, to extract uh, in a unique way an, uh, an iso unitary transformation. And the, this is a class of uh, uh, an infinite class of equivalence of, of, uh, of iso mechanics, if you want, of following the construction with the iso mechanics. The, um, <clears throat> The, uh, here is the construction, elementary construction of isomathematics, including isonumbers, and all the axioms, all the axioms, one by one, they are lifted, and you cannot escape uh, maintaining rigorously all uh, the validity, all the axioms. Um, uh, pick up a uh, non unitary transform, and you map uh, the unit of the, into the iso unit that you select. You select, uh, for instance, the tree or uh, is an incredible uh, um, uh, integral differential operator. It doesn't matter, provided it's uh, positive definite. This is, you assume this as iso unit. Then you do the same transformation for the conventional product. Professor Cruz, this is also apl uh, is applicable to your formulation of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of an abstract, um, of an interaction. So <clears throat> you do the, exactly the same non-unitarian transformation. You do a multiplication, and then you immediately see you have to transform each element. So you need an extra, extra element. Automatically, you see the necessarily the appearance of the inverse of I here, which is exactly the star unit. And this is the isotopic element. Finally, this is perhaps the, one of the most important things I have to say here. And that is, um, I do not consider experiment, I have to repeat, in my opinion, um, experimental verification are not valid unless 
the theory is capable of predicting the same number on the same condition at different times. And, uh, and here is now the here is the the the, this, the, the point that uh, the the, um, the class of infinite equivalence of this theory as is unitary iso unitary this law here, and indeed if you transform the iso unit not with another unitary transform you another unitary transform you alter the values, but you transform it with an iso unitary transform, you preserve numerically the value of the iso unit. And then you do the same ISO transform to a product. You can see at the beginning, you see, oh my God, I mapped not only the element X and Y, but I also have mapped the element, the isotopic element. When you look and look in detail, no, the isotopic element is identically preserved. That is why we believe that, um, we believe that, um, the, we believe that um, the experimental verification of this theory are indeed are indeed uh, are indeed valid. This is the Lie isotopy, the, the infinite class of isotopy of Lie algebra. I don't think I can, can go, but I would like to have the final point to, to really to construct the isomathematics. <clears throat> this is talking about the early 90s. We were unable to achieve the achieve the invariance of the, the invariance of numerical prediction. And uh, <clears throat> above all, we were unable to construct any explicit model, concrete model. The reason why we missed the, the, the expression of the linear momentum for uh, on, on the isotopy. And notice the this is the, the structurally, structurally dependent on Newton Leibniz calculus, a partial derivative there. So our models, we call them administronis <clears throat> because the, the wave function was defined on an iso coordinate, that's a volume. The, 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 the isotopic element, all sort of in, uh, nice in, the, in, the, in interaction, it can be also defined on volume, the, the potentially defined on volume. But look at the Laplace, the differential part is defined at the point. This is the minestrone. Uh, there, there, there was no, no there was, it was structural inconsistency. I was at the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research. Out of desperation, I had to examine the axiom, uh, axiom uh, <clears throat> of Newton Leibniz differential calculus. When I had that courage, it was very easy to do, to very easy. There is the courage that missed me for years because of respect to those are giants in my mind. So for years and years, I, finally I had this courage. And it came out, the axiom of the <clears throat> Newton Leibniz calculus, I, uh, the, they of course are, co axiom are correct. And the calculus as presented for fourth century, of course, is absolutely, definitely correct. But it is, uh, it, it, the, the formulation until now is correct under the assumption that uh, the isotopic element of the, the, of the basic field in which the, the calculus is defined is either uh, the number one or is a, uh, is a function in, in, independent from the variable of differentiation. However, if the multiplicative unit of the base field in which the calculus is, def is, is, is de defined, if that basic unit depends on the local variable of differentiation, then no, Newton Leibniz calculus cannot be accepted as is. The axiom remain again, the axiom are majestic and magnificent, they remain, <clears throat> but the calculus has to be lifted. You see here, this is the, this is the, this is the, the, the iso differential. It's written with the same symbol of the ordinary differential. But the hat, look at the hat, me, what the explicit, what the hat means as this expression, you do a little, little elementary calculation. We have the ordinary differential multiplied by an extra term. This extra term is what allowed us uh, all our achievement, including the achievement of an attractive force between identical electrons in a, in a kind of valence pair. <clears throat> and <clears throat> and uh, so this is the extra term. Now the same for the isoderivative, we reduce the ordinary derivative by factorizing the isotopic element carefully. It's an ordinary ordinary derivative with respect to iso coordinates. Once we introduced this iso differential calculus, it was elementary to, to, um, to write down the iso linear, iso momentum, the iso Hilbert space, and everything uh, is topically lifted. The, in which you can uh, now, this is the expression on, 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 at, uh, at, uh, iso, in iso mathematics, then projected on an ordinary Hilbert space. You see this expression, you see that you recover the ordinary, the, 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 the um, partial derivative, but there is a factorization <clears throat> of the iso unit 
namely Planck constant is replaced by the actual unit essential. And then after that, it's easy to, to construct all the relativistic equation. This is the iso, iso, um, uh, isotopy of the um, uh, Klein Gordon equation and, and, and so on. Those are some of the monographs that have been written uh, by independent authors that have been written in, the, in this various field. <clears throat> Let me flash at least you some uh, point that may be of interest to you. Professor, the late Professor Zagas, he was working on, um, on um, uh, he was working on the unification and the following the theory was a prop proposition at that time that the three dimensional uh, simple least until the iso algebra include as particular case all possible three dimensional Lie algebra. Now, this is a very big unification. He had proved for, uh, for the classical algebra, A, B, C, D, and he was trying to incorporate. The, the, the exceptional Lie algebra. This is very, 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 very demanding project. The, 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 but he died, unfortunately. Professor Gamformina, uh, oh, Professor Zagas also did the many papers on the isotopy of manifolds, magnificent mathematical, but of course, not very, very deep in mathematics, not my mathematics. I am a physicist. And um, but you may know that Professor Gamformina and, um, and Nunes uh, work out the, 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 the new isotopology for Sagas as on um, as a, uh, as on the, the isospaces, and uh, which is the first typology that I know for characterizing particles, not the Euclidean topology points, no extended particles, but what are the what is the extension? The extension is the, the isonumber, which represents volume. And there are many other um, contributions. Each of these uh, authors has, has produced a fundamental contribution. I, I mentally apologize. I could not, uh, I could not uh, indicate their work because of um... I, I think this would be an excellent place to, to break. Um, of course, there, there are probably many other things uh, that you could say on this subject. Um, and, and I hope that that we'll have a chance to to continue um, at uh, say in in three weeks time or something like that. We could schedule um, another meeting uh, at the end of October if if everyone was was interested to continue. Um, this last few slides, you know, could serve as the introduction to to an extended uh, presentation by Dr. Santilli. Um, but of course, we we also I, I also would like to uh, receive um, suggestions for other talks, especially during November. So that um, just to remind you, uh, and as time is is very limited, so I I think I just like to say thank you, Dr. Santilli, and thank you for everyone for attending. And we really need to stop at this point. And uh, we'll meet again the same time next week. Uh, any other questions or comments by anyone? I just want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you to everybody for and apologize for <clears throat> first of all my eyes. I, uh, I did not have time to check the final uh, the final transparency. I had other commitments, so I apologize. And I apologize for lack of uh, mathematical rigor. I was trying to express concept rather than express um, uh, correct uh, definition, which requires just a lack of time. I wanted to make it a run out of ideas. And, um, but next time I will try to start with theorems. And then in this case, we are more rigorous. And I'll check the transparency. I promise you, I'll check the transparency very accurately. Appreciate no your problem. patience. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. And... OK. OK. Thank you to you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Everybody, goodbye. Bye-bye.